Luke chapter 21, verse 7. So they asked Jesus, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what will be the signs will be there uh, when these things are about to take place? And Jesus said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. There are many, as right through the scriptures, there's many that are saying, he has the answer, we have the answer, we have the solution. But there's only one solution that's in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, and it's the pure word of God. Many are being drawn away by all these things. But when you hear of wars and commotions, that word commotions is what we face when there's disturbances, when there's riots. That is the word that is used. Across the world there's been riots, there's been all these things happening. And do not be terrified, Jesus says, for these things must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately. That nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you. And he carries on about persecution. And then he says um, in verse 14, But settle in your hearts. Do not meditate beforehand on what you will answer when they arrest the people. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom, which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed. And it goes on about even friends, um, hated. And then he says, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the armies. And then he talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. And then after that, he actually talks about his second coming. And uh, all of these things, there are things happening in today. Um, the earthquakes, the, the, there's one yesterday just happened in Morocco. Uh, over a thousand people already confirmed dead. There are floods like we've never ever seen before across Europe. It's like the streets have just become rivers. All of these things are birth pains. These are preparing us. And we as believers, Jesus said, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful of all these things. All the nations that are, that are coming together that are trying to bring in a one world order. They try to bring one person. You, are, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That's their motto. And that all the cities they're now creating, that you have a 15-minute city. You're not allowed to go out for 15 minutes, not further than 15 minutes. They're creating these buildings where everyone stays in there and you've got a, more, a mini mall in it and you buy, you shop, you do your job, everything in that one position, one place. Now all of these things are happening. And they're happening very, very fast. All the preparation that they can number everybody, uh, you can't buy or sell without the mark. All of these things are already prepared. They're already done. But Jesus says, don't be fearful in the midst of it. And that's what I want to speak about, is having the peace of God and having the rest in Him. Resting in the Lord. In the midst of all of this turmoil, we need to be at rest. That's why Jesus says in um, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus speaks about, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So these things are happening and they're happening fast. And you can't say, yeah, but I believe it won't happen. I believe these things are, they are happening. It's being predicted. Jesus prophesied it. The book of Revelation tells you exactly what's going to happen. Uh, and all of these things that are happening, they try to destroy the farmlands. They, because you need to be dependent on them. And what you're going to eat is bugs. 
modified bugs, all these things. You, can, you look at the internet, you cannot believe. And then they talk about the Nephilim and all of these things and the giants returning uh, and all of these things that are happening and the things that are in the sky, all of the, the stuff that's, that's happening, the, the UFOs and the, all of these things, and there are footage of stuff. Then all these strange things happening. But Jesus said, don't be terrified. Don't be terrified of them. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. And we need to come unto him. And that's why Jesus says, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. Now, <clears throat> this was the religious labor that all of these laws, 613 laws plus all of the laws that the scribes and Pharisees put on the people. All you that labor on a heavy laden, you had to keep all these laws and you had to do it in your own strength. No power to help you except God's word and your love for God. That is the only thing that kept the person from not continuing all of the sin and heavy laden. And you had to do all of these laws. Keep all of those laws in order that you may have an assurance of salvation. But he says, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. And you know, there's people that are laboring in their lives. There's things that are happening. They're heavy laden with burdens, with all of the cares of this life. And Jesus says, come unto me. Come to him. But he that comes to God, but without faith, this is Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe first. That he is. And, in other words, that God exists. There's no question that God created the universe. Not some being out there or some mystery or some puff of smoke or whatever. God created the heaven. We must believe that he is, that he exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. So God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. It's not just a question, come unto the Lord <clears throat> and just say, well, everything's fine. All your troubles are gone. They told me that. They said, don't worry. All your troubles are gone. You're now a believer. God loves you. You can do anything. <clears throat> don't worry about it. You're under grace. Everything's going to happen automatically. Don't go and get another job. Don't go and study further. Don't do all this because... Uh, Jesus is coming the very next day kind of thing. And you get caught up in this mystery of all these things. Then you realize, but there's life to live. And you deliver it by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of God. So he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you have to believe that. If you seek the Lord in every circumstance, in whatever you, your situation you do, you seek the Lord, he is going to reward us. For seeking Him and drawing closer to Him. That's why when you're heavy laden, He says, I will give you rest. Okay? Take my yoke upon you. So in order to get the rest of God, you have to take His yoke. And that word is to connect. You have to connect with Him. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So He doesn't want us to struggle every day <clears throat> through our lives on our own. He wants to us to connect with Him. He's willing to connect with us, but we need to be willing to connect with Him. Lord, help me in the midst of this. Father, show me what must I do in these circumstances. What must I do in all of these tribulations, trials that are going all over the world? <clears throat> Don't be afraid of it. But trust in Him, because in Him, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. There's a key. Learn of me. In other words, we need to know who and what we are in Christ Jesus. Learn that he's able to aid us in all our tribulation, in all our circumstance. He's able to aid us. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We need to believe as we come to know the Lord and as we walk in his way, that believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is the rewarder. Believe that he is.
For Jesus says, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He is not proud, neither should we be. And he, if God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So we need to enter into his rest. Have the assurance of enter. The Lord will take care of everything. As long as we follow what he, the plan he has. And one of the things that Paul said, he said, the Lord has delivered me out of all of my tribulation. So there's times we go through all tribulation, we see things happening, all of these things. But you know what? There's an assurance. Our lives in his hands. If we seek the Lord <clears throat> and diligently seek him, he will reward us. And we will have the peace. And we will enter into his rest. And you know, that's, <clears throat> it's not easy to just be at rest in the midst of a trial. But you see, Paul learned that. Paul wasn't always, if we looked at the, last week at the list of stuff that Paul faced. None of us want to go through any of that by the grace of God. Okay? But some of us will go through some, some of those things. But of all of those things, Paul said something. I've learned to be content in the circumstance. In it. Right in it. Because why? Our lives are in His hands. We've come unto the Lord and we've placed our lives in His hands. And He's placed our lives in the Father's hands. And no one will snatch us out of His hand. We have an assurance. We win by the grace of God. We have. And He said, <coughs> um, prepare yourselves for that day that you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things that's coming to pass. And he mentioned every single thing that's going to happen in this end time in the book of Revelation. All of the plagues, all of those pouring out the bowls of wrath. The wrath of God is going to be poured out in the world, not on the church. So we need to make sure that our lives are ready, that we, our lives are resting in His ability, in His sacrifice, in His works that are completed through the cross of Jesus. I'm meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Hope is the anchor to the soul. Our hope in Him, our hope in eternal life, is the anchor that keeps us going. No matter what happens, by the grace of God, we will be with Him for all eternity. And the scripture says that this life is just like a vapor. In comparison to eternity with God, it's just like a vapor. It'll just disappear in, compared to eternity. We cannot fathom eternity. We cannot. Not in our human understanding. We cannot fathom millions and billions and billions of years to come in the presence of God. And those who don't want to spend time in the presence of God, who don't want to know God now, <coughs> He will honor them, their choice, because they won't be with Him. But thank God those of us that honor the Lord and we want to be in His presence, we want to walk in the blessing of the Lord, we can now come unto Him, all you that labor and are heavy laden, He will give us rest. And we will find rest for our souls because we will learn that He's given us victory. We will learn everything, who we are in Christ, that we can have and walk in that victory. Who are you in Christ? We need to know that because in Him we live and move and have our being. That's the key to it. In Him, we live and move. We are not separated. We are joined together in this. Workers together with the Lord. So in our lives, whatever God has called us to do, whatever we need to be doing, He will help us in it. But we need to pray for wisdom. Father, give me that wisdom. And take, spend a time, just, just separate a time of rest. We're talking about rest, okay? Um, Rest in Him. Rest in Christ. Rest in everything that He's done for us. In all things that He's done for us. And believe that He is and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So it's for us to diligently seek the Lord. Now, in Acts chapter 3 verse 19, Peter was preaching. This was after they had prayed for the, or commanded 
the, the lame man to get up and walk. And what Peter did, he didn't just stand there and say, okay, get up and walk, you know, stand there. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And what did he do? He took him by the hand and lifted him up. Because Peter had faith because God gave him the faith to believe that man to be raised. And he leaped and walked and praised God. Now Peter was preaching because a whole bunch of people, everyone knew this guy had been at the temple for years and begging. And <clears throat> knew. And then he began to preach to this crowd. And one of the things he said, repent. Okay, turn from your way and uh, therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out that the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord you see many times we face all these tribulations, troubles but we need a refreshing we need a time to just separate from all of those troubles from all the, 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 the uh, what is Bind in our soul, bind in our mind, separate ourselves, and just spend time with the Lord. Just with His Word. You see, many times we say, Lord, give me an answer. I need, I need, I need wisdom. I need an answer. <clears throat> but many times as we read in the Scripture, a word will come. Word of knowledge. And sometimes it's so simple, you think to yourself, but that's just so simple. And we need to hear that word. Because the time of refreshing, rejoicing, in the Lord. That's where it comes from, the presence of the Lord. Now, in the book of um, Exodus, Mo uh, God, uh, Moses was communing with the Lord and, um, and he said, and God said to him, my presence, Exodus thirty three fourteen, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. And then he answers and he says, If your presence go not with me, carry us not there. So <clears throat> he says, My presence will go with you and I will give you peace. And we need to seek the Lord's presence and seek the Lord because that's where his peace is. Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. And he gave rest to the people. There was a measure of rest that he gave, and he says, my presence will go with you. And we need the presence of the Lord. We need the presence. We, not, we, don't, have, we don't need religion. We need a relationship with God. We need to draw upon his presence, draw upon his strength in these times, that we have rest for our souls, that we, our souls rest in the ability that when the trumpet sounds, we will be with him. We're not going to go through that tribulation. But regardless of the tribulations we face, He is with us through it, mightily in it and with us. In Him we live and move and have our being. Our rest is in His Word. Israel didn't enter into their rest, those that uh, died in the, in the wilderness, because of their unbelief. But we can enter the rest of God and be and have the refreshing and the, from the presence of the Lord and have the reward of God who diligently seek Him. In the midst of trials, people are watching for answers. They're looking all over. If you see all of the, 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 the posts on the internet of everyone's got an answer for something. But there's the real answer is what they're looking for is Jesus Christ eternal life. They want the absolute assurance that when they die, they will be in the presence of the Lord. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And <clears throat> I will come, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That word receive is to squeeze close. Because we're in his hand. And we need to understand and believe and trust God in all of these circumstances. There is a way out. <clears throat> there is victory through everything that we face in Jesus Christ. But we need to enter His rest. And the scripture says strive to enter that rest. We'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But He says strive to enter that rest. 
In other words, lay aside everything else and strive to enter into that rest and that refreshing. And see the glory of the Lord bless you and keep you in all the ways. But come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So our attitude in the midst of all of this, <coughs> our attitude of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. If I need refreshing, if you need refreshing, it comes from the presence of the Lord. It comes from spending that time. Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. Let not the world draw us away from that. Let not all the distractions, all the cares of this life. There comes a time where we need to just separate ourselves. You know, Jesus said to his disciples after they'd ministered and prayed and went out and preached the gospel. And he said, come aside and rest a while. Come aside and rest a while. And there are times we just have to enter the things that we need to do. But there's other things we just need to separate and say, Come aside and rest in Him. Rest a while. Get the word of knowledge. Get the word of wisdom. Father, what must I do in this circumstance? Give me the wisdom. Come aside and rest a while. Now, what it, when Peter, uh, when um, Paul prayed and said, Lord, can you deliver me out of this messenger of Satan? <clears throat> Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. What did Paul say? I will glory in tribulation. I will glory that the power of God may rest on me. And we need that anointing. We need that rest in an assurance. And when people see us walking in rest, when they're in turmoil, when they, they will want to know, what is it about you? What is it? I've had a number of times where somebody said, what is it? What is the difference? Why do you face what you face? In the circumstance, it's by the grace of God. There's times you just get aside and rest. Because the turmoil that goes around you, we just allow that. All the cares, all the turmoil, that's exactly, and all the voices coming. <clears throat> What's going to happen? What about the aliens? What about uh, all of these things? What about the mark of the beast? Where are we going to get food from? Where are we going to get this? All of that. Just put that aside and rather rest in His ability. Rest in Him, because in Him we live and move and have our being, and we have peace and we have rest for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. As we put our lives in His hands, and sometimes we draw a sign, we can always come back and say, Father, forgive me. Father, I want, to, I want to be closer to You. I want to walk with You. You draw near to God, He'll draw near to You. So it's our choice to... Come unto Him, all you that labor on a heavy laden, come unto Him. And believe that He is, and there is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. He's not going to exclude anyone. We don't have to say, Lord, I want a closer walk. And if we say that, then we need to make sure we are going to draw closer to Him. One man, just before he died, he said to me, He really wants a closer walk with the Lord. And I said, you know, it's about faith. And you need to take the first step. Because if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. And I believe that uh, two weeks later he died. But I believe that was the step in his life. Lord, I want to be closer to you. Not that the Lord took him, but that his life was going to be taken because of his illness. But he had a closer walk with God from that day. Closer. God wants us to have a closer walk with him. Thank you, Jesus, that we can walk with you. And that we can have and enter into your rest in Jesus' mighty name.